Hey, welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner and Photography Weekly, episode number 57 for Sunday, May the 20th, 2012. Coming up in today's show, a photo booth strip. What? A photo booth strip? You haven't seen photo booths in malls for years, have you? Or maybe you have. Well, let's go ahead and create a photo strip today that looks realistic and it looks like it came from one of those photo booths. Also, a lot of you out there have been creating your own websites, so we're going to talk about Weebly. That's what I use to create my websites. And domain names. We've been talking on Facebook a little bit about that, and people aren't real sure about how that works or what a domain name even is or do you need it. And then we're going to also show you a way to add your website to Google so people can find you. What's the sense of building it if they don't know where you're at? And... Uh, let me see here. That's where we're coming off at today. That's what we're going to be teaching. So let's go ahead and get the opener in here and get started with Photography Weekly, episode number 57. Okay, guys, I would also like to thank our sponsors for this week's show. And those sponsors are Weebly.com. Uh, so if you want to create a great website, great free website, go to my website, jackstechcorner.com, and click on Weebly on the left. And oneinone.com for all your hosting and your domain name needs. Thank you, sponsors, and I appreciate it. Now let's go ahead. We're going to give the official shout-outs here this morning. Let me uh, bring up my chat window here. Uh, let me see if I can uh, actually find a chat window here. And uh, all you guys are chatting in there. Good morning to, uh, let's see, we have uh, Jessica's in there. Brian. Uh, Cheryl's in there. And... Uh, DSEPC01's in there. Uh... Frito Lay, Frito Lay is in here. Wow, that's a tough one. Jeff's in there, and uh, Jeff eight, Jamie, Jody, June, Pete, Randy, and our friend from down and under in Australia is uh, Shara's. Shara's. I think I said that right. Hopefully, I got that in there right. Let's see. So as you see here, we have a photo strip, a photo strip type of a. Um, uh, uh, we have a photo strip. It looks like it came from a photo booth. Okay, that's what this is actually. So how did we get there? How are we going to make this? And bear with me here, because I'm going to follow through on my notes. I'm going to show you exactly how we got here. So the first thing I'm going to do with this one, this is actually my final product here. So we're just going to uh, delete it. And uh, we'll, we're not going to save it. And we're going to revert these back uh, to the original here because we have to show you a couple different steps how I got there. And let's revert this one back. And we'll revert this one back. Now what we're going to do is we are going to actually come in here and this is, again, what we're going to end up with. Um, with the background on it that I made, and then we did some, some shadowing. But this is the original strip that I created. So how did we get there? Well, let's go ahead and close this out. Nah, we're not going to save it either. I'm brave. All right, these are the pictures we're going to use. So what I did, first of all, was I went into either your organizer or Lightroom or um, whatever you may be using to organize your pictures. And I opened up the four pictures into my editor. So you have to have four pictures that you want to use in your editor. Now we're going to go ahead and we are going to go to File, New, and we're going to create a blank file. 
in this file, we'll just call it strip for the film strip itself. Now, what you want to make sure of right here is look at these settings, the width and the height. The width, we're going to change that to 5. And over here, where it's normally set to pixels, you're going to set this to inches. And if I didn't mention this, this will work in Photoshop Elements, I believe, from version 5 all the way up to 10. So you should be good to go. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to make the height of this thing 20 inches. So we have it 20 inches high by 5 inches in width. The resolution I set to 300. The background we can just leave it set to white. That's fine. Let's click OK. So here is our film strip. Now, our next step on this process is to get these pictures cropped properly and get those into this film strip. But now this is version 10, and in version, I believe it was version 8, they started with putting these tabs up here along the top. And it gets very hard to, to do these pictures because of these things being in tabs. You have to switch and copy and paste, and I don't like to do that. So let's go ahead and set your elements up first to make it really easy to uh, make this happen. Let's go up to your if you're on a Mac, it's it's under the uh, Adobe Photo Elements Editor and then Preferences and General. If you're on Windows, go under Edit. So yours will be under Edit and Preferences will be down here at the bottom. Let's go up here. And we're going to go to General. And right here under General, you are going to find where it says allow floating documents in full edit mode. We want these documents to float and a document is a picture. I don't know why they call it documents. They should call it a picture or a file. Just click add on and click OK. Now we don't have to close it or do anything fancy to it, but we can start dragging these pictures. Click on the tab up here. Watch and just drag it in. And what it's going to do, it's going to allow you to have this picture floating around your actual editor so that way we can work on the pictures with the strip itself it makes it really easy to uh, do and it makes it easier to work with so there's one we're gonna pull them all out two three and there's my fourth picture actually you see they kind of stuck together there it's pulled over here so this is my four pictures. Now you're saying, Jack, why on earth did you do that? That's kind of ridiculous. Well, because now we don't have to operate on those tabs and go back and forth and everything there and work on those different tabs. We can actually do everything together with, with the actual strip right in front of us. And I kind of like that. Now, the next thing we have to do is we're going to crop these images down. Now to make it easy on you and to make it so you don't have to guess, we're going to set our crop tool to a certain height and a certain width. So we'll click on crop tool. And up here, we're going to set our width to 5. And if inches is not in there, type in IN. So here, let me do this for you. 5 space IN. And the height, we're going to do the height the same way. 5 space IN for inches. Next, the resolution, again, set that to 300, and it's set to pixels. Now, why did we do that? And I know everybody out there is stating that right now, and probably in the chat room, they're saying, wow, why is Jack doing that? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Well, we know our film strip that we're working on, or I'm going to call it a photo booth strip. We know that our photo booth strip that we are working on is 20 inches long. So if we crop these things to 5 inches high, we can fit four photos on there. So now it's making sense to you, right? It's very easy to do that. So let's go ahead and start cropping these pictures and putting them into our photo booth strip. So our crop tool is selected. And what it's going to do here, we're restricting the aspect ratio. So when we go to crop, it knows 
look, I can't pull it any bigger because it knows what we want. It knows that we want that five by five. And if you pull it down, it's going to make it a little wider. Pull it up. But you want that five by five is what you're going to crop. So you find out what you want to crop. And once you have her cropped out, then click the move tool. Click on that picture and just move it over and place it on your photo strip. And that's what's going to go down the bottom there. All right. So that was the first photo. This is the second photo. We're going to do the same thing. Use the crop tool. It's already set to default here. Five by five. That's where we want it. Find out where you want to crop it at. Click OK. A little check box. Let's do the move tool again. Pull it over. Drop it. And you can see where it's going five inches across by five inches high. Pull it up and snap it to your other one. There you go. Let's do the next picture here. Well, this picture looks like we already cropped that one. Oops. This is the one we want. So this picture, we're going to do this one next. Again, we'll use the crop tool. We're going to crop this one out. Pull it to where you want it. Click the little check box. Click the move tool, which is at the top there. It says move. Pull it over. And put it on our film strip. Pull it down to place. And then the last one here is this one on the swing. I pulled over so I can see a little bit more of it. Once again, we're going to simply need to do this. We're going to go to crop. And we're going to crop this out right here. Pull down to where you want it and click the little check box. Click the move tool and move your last picture on to your photo booth strip. Now I'm saying it right, right? Photo booth strip. It's not a film strip, folks. Think of this as a photo booth strip. I really don't want that white in there. I want that closed up. That little gap right there needs to be closed. There we go. And I'm just going to fill this in down here just by pulling it down just a little bit. And we'll click the checkbox. So now what happened there, if you've noticed, over on your layers panel over here on the side, we now have multiple layers. So we have all these different layers in here. And these layers are making up all these pictures right here with the background. Now, we are going into... Or we are going to actually take these layers with this layer and we're going to go ahead and we are going to take those and I'm just double checking my notes now because this is a pretty lengthy uh, tutorial here. We're going to go to this top layer and what we need to do on that top layer is very simply, we need to put a white border around here. There's probably a lot of ways you can do that white border, but I'm going to show you the way that I like to do this. We're going to go in here with a, we're going to try an inner glow. We're going to do a simple inner glow and click apply. And when we do that, it's going to give us this little FX on here, right? And we know that FX indicates a layer style. So go ahead and double click on the FX. And now we want to set that color more, oh, not really yellow. I want to set the color to white. So I'm clicking on the little color palette right here beside where it says inner glow is selected. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to adjust that size out a little bit. And what you're doing here, you're actually giving it a border. You 
you want to make it realistic without making it look too much like a vignette and then click OK now once you have that border selected like that and that's done you can go and you can add the border to each one of these other layers but what we're going to do instead is this is a little trick I found click on the FX itself and drag it down to your next one and leave it go let's try that again click on the FX and drag it down and when you do that what you're what you're going to see there is when you're doing that instead of copying it it's going to actually move that FX layer so here's the shortcut key you have to remember hold your alt key down click on it and pull it down now what you're going to do is you're going to see that it's going to go ahead and copy that style to the next layer down do it again and we're going to do it again now we have our strip looking kind of like we want it right we have that white edge around all of them so now it's looking more like the photo booth that we want it to, to be like now that we have that done we're going to actually take all of our layers here click on the top and we're going to go up to layer and we're simply going to go down to flatten image and when you do that now it's going to make one film strip I'm getting I'm saying film strip one photo boost strip so it's making one photo boost strip that we are going to use now to put on that new background so it looks pretty realistic and we say wow this looks nice but now we want to go ahead and we want to create a new background so now for my background we know that this is 5 by 20 so the background is going to have to be a little bit bigger than that so let's go to file new blank file and we'll call this background and this time the width we're gonna make the width to be about uh, we'll make it 10 and we'll make the height to be about and we'll go 40 we could always crop this down folks so don't worry too much about that let's go and click OK And if you see this new file here, you say, well, that really doesn't look wide enough. I don't like that. So I'm going to close. I'm going to just kick that off and go file, new blank file again. And we're going to make it wider here. So instead of 10, we're going to make it about 30 wide by about 50 high and see what happens. There we go. Now that's a nice looking background right there. And we can see that our film strip is going to fit on there. But what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to pull it, I'm going to dock it into my tabs so I can work on it. Now we're going to go ahead and add a gradient to this backdrop. Again, so if you're taking notes, bear with me. This is a little bit long tutorial, I told you. So just each step of the way. Click on our gradient tool. Now, how do you change the gradients? You know, up here there's, there's a default set of gradients that kind of stink. I don't see where they're that great. So what we're going to do is we're going to build our own gradient. So first pick your foreground color. I'm going to pick the little bit lighter blue for the foreground. And then if you click on the black or the background, we'll go back to blue here and pick something a little darker for the background and click OK. All right. Now that's our gradient. All right, so it's very easy to make your own gradient. Now you just have to decide how you want it to be laid on there. You want a linear gradient. So you can either have a linear, a radial gradient. I kind of like that the most. An angle, a reflected, or a diamond. Let's go with the radiant. That's what I like. You can do whichever ones you want. And just drag from one side and just pull up. And we're going to add this gradient on here. There we go. So that's our gradient. If it doesn't look quite right, we can always go up here, click on Undo Gradient, and you can redo it. Maybe you want to start a little bit higher with your light blue. 
and put it on there. All right. Once we have that done, now we're ready to go ahead and add our films or add our photo booth strip to our background. So let's click on the tab up here, go back to our photo booth strip. We're going to click on select all, edit, we're going to copy it. Now we'll come over here and we're going to do an edit and we're going to paste it. So now we have it on there. And again, now you can see where it looks awful small compared to this background. You can pull that up if you wish, make it a little bigger. Or what I like to do first before I do anything else with this is I like to go ahead and just crop the background. Now when we go to do that, we're going to have to go to aspect ratio and go no restrictions because remember we restricted it before. Let's go ahead and just take this part right about here, like here, and then we will go to fill the screen, get it fit on the screen. Now we're ready to go ahead and work on this layer here. So what we want to do now is give it that three dimensional type look to try to show how this should look uh, laying on this piece of paper. So and a lot of you have done this in the past here when you were making film strips. Now remember this is a photo booth strip, so it's it's up and down, it's vertical, it's not horizontal. So we have our layers selected. Let's go up to filter, distort, and shear. And I kind of already have mine set. Uh, let's see if we can uh, take this back to defaults. Normally it's like this, and all you got to do is when you're in this thing, just click in here and just drag it over a little bit. Drag the middle over a little bit. You can drag the bottom over a little bit, just to give it that little bit of a spin. You can even drag this over just a little bit more, kind of like this. And I want to pull it over just a little bit more because I'm going to give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a shadow in the background. So there we have that. That's going to go ahead and apply itself. And now we have that little bit of a distortion. You can see it there. Now with that distortion done, our next thing we need to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a shadow to that. Now this is a neat trick that I picked up this week. Uh, I think you're going to enjoy this little trick. It makes it a little bit easier to create this shadow effect. And we're going to go ahead and create a new uh, layer, so let's do that, new layer, I'm going to put this up on top of this layer, this layer is in the middle, we're going to click on that layer, and what we're going to do now is come over, click back on your default foreground and background colors and make the foreground color black, let's go ahead and grab a paintbrush, And use your right and left bracket keys to make this paintbrush bigger or smaller. What you're going to do is click on the top here. And you have that little black thing there. A little black dot in the behind there. And if you go down the bottom, hold your shift key down. And look how it draws that straight line behind that. What? That was pretty amazing. Huh. Let's go back and do it one more time. Matter of fact, I'm going to make this a little bigger. So we're going to go up here, a little bit more towards the edge, a little bigger. Click once. Let's go down here in the bottom towards the middle, right about here. Hold the shift key down, and there it draws our nice line down there. Again, just a little shortcut, nice little trick. Of course, now you see I put it on the wrong layer, which happens. Let's go back. I had somebody write in one time and said, boy, even Jack can make a mistake, especially when you're doing live tutorials. Click again, hold your shift key down somewhere in the middle. There, it's on our its own layer. We want it to be on its own layer because what we want to do now is be able to drop the opacity down. So let's drop the opacity down. And drop it even more, a little more. Right about there. Now here's the last trick I want to show you. Now this will work with our Photoshop Elements 9 and 10 users. 
Right here, you see in the bottom where I went over a little bit, made it too wide, too long. That doesn't make sense because there's nothing to reflect, so it wouldn't be a shadow laying under there. So what we're going to do is give ourselves a, you're right, a layer mask. That's what we're going to put on there. Here's your layer mask. We have our paintbrush tool. And if you paint with black, remember black would hide. I mean, I'm sorry, black would reveal. You're revealing the blue on that bottom layer. So again, let's just go over that. And what's really neat with this, a lot of people don't understand is, since you're painting on the mask, and we're not painting on the picture, we're not getting rid of any of this. So you can just go right over the picture there and get rid of your mistake on the bottom. And there you have it. There's a photo booth strip. Looks like it came off a photo booth. You got multiple pictures on there. Uh, you can write text on the top or do whatever else you want to with that to make it uh, more your own and play around with that. Okay, guys, with that said, it's that time in the morning where I'm going to uh, come back here and see the chat room in just a second. But right now, we're going to top off the coffee cup, uh, play our little sponsors ads there. We've got to get those out to you guys uh, this morning. And I'll be right back with domains, websites, domain names, and adding yourself to Google. See you back here in just uh, about three minutes. Okay, everyone. Thank you for letting me take a few minutes of your time here to introduce our sponsors to you and to make sure that we still have that great relationship between you, myself, and our sponsors so everybody can benefit and you can benefit in the end with some savings. First, let me introduce to you really quick Lightroom for Learning. It's a brand new DVD I have that just came out. It's me, I created it, I produced it, I recorded all the videos, and that DVD is now available. It's called Lightroom for Learning. Or, if you can't wait for the DVD to be shipped to your house, I got you covered. Also, if you want to save a little bit of shipping, click on Online Class, and right here in the bottom it says introducing learning Lightroom for for all now there's the uh, introduction right there just click here and you'll go into the online class all it is is you sign up it's a self sign up you just pay the fee through PayPal and you're ready to go there's 32 easy to follow videos I take you from A to Z in Lightroom so if you think that you're going to be using Lightroom or if you have Lightroom 4 and you're scratching your head trying to figure it out, now's the time to go ahead and learn that. So now we're going to get to that part. I know a lot of you have been creating your websites there with um, uh, Weebly. I know that's where mine is. I've been telling people to go there. It's very easy to do. Um, I have used to do a lot of website programming uh, years ago. And when I started website programming, I mean, we were doing it in, in a text editor. There was no WYSIWYGs or what? What's a WYSIWYG? Uh, not to get too in-depth here, but a WYSIWYG is what you see is what you get. That's what a WYSIWYG is. Uh, and um, basically, it's just an easy way to do your uh, editing. So the reason I wanted to show you this, and how does it relate to pictures? Because a lot of you are creating these websites to put your pictures on a picture site. So I wanted to show you that and show you how we would do that with your pictures. So hopefully everybody will hang in there with me for this part of the segment. Uh, some of you might be saying, Jack, this isn't photo editing. Uh, we'll see you. Have a good day. We're out of here. Uh, but I've gotten a lot of requests for this, so I have to cover it uh, for the folks that wanted it requested. Also, we're going to talk about domain names. And why do you need a domain name? I mean, the main reason you need a domain name is you need a domain name because if you want to be searchable on Google, Google's not going to go out and look for something like... Um, you know, jacksphotos.weebly.com. It doesn't really work that way. It wants you to search for your domain name. And if you're running your business, if you're running a business or your photos online, then you need an actual realistic name. So let's go ahead and we're going to take a look at that now. All right. Get my editor out of the way here. And I'm not saving any of these. I can rebuild those later. All right. Let's try and get this off the screen right here, and then we'll get started.
<laughs> yeah, I think we've all forgotten usernames and passwords at one time or another. So, well, hopefully Kevin's watching. Uh, it looks like Jessica fell there again. I don't know if she was having trouble or not uh, this morning. You need password buddies. <laughs> Makes it a little bit easier to have a password buddy. All right. So, let's go here. And we're going to go to my desktop. We're going to go to the main screen here. And we'll... S no, not full screen. We're going to select an area here so you guys can see it a little easier. And bring this up here. I'm going to show you how this works and how we put all this together. And uh, we'll show we're done selecting. We'll show mouse pointer. All right. All right. Okay. So here we are. We're going to get started. Now, you can use any registry that you want to use. I mean, it doesn't really matter who you use. Um, I obviously use one to one. I've been using one to one for a long time. Um, and if you, one thing you're going to learn about this show over time, if you stick around here with us, is I don't have affiliates with anybody that I don't use. Um, I believe that because if I don't use the products, then I'm not going to tell you to buy them or, you know, just because they're trying to uh, donate to the show or, or help the show out in any way but the people that I deal with is people that I try to get you decent deals from um, and people that I actually use so one to one I've been using them for a long time they host the files uh, like the files if I put them up on iTunes you know for podcasting or if I put these shows up on a website I have to upload them somewhere so one to one actually has space for me to do that they also have website builders that you can use to build your own website here. So if you wish to do that, you have that option also. And I haven't really played with their website builder because I use Weebly, just another company that I used and I kind of like it. So here's the domain name box right here. And you can see domain names start at $4.99 per year. Now, $4.99 per year. And after that, I think it goes to either $9.99 or $10.99. But you just search in here what you want. Let's put in here um, uh, Betty's uh, photo gallery. Let's just say you're, you're, you're Betty and you, you got Betty's photo gallery and you want it to be a .com. Now it doesn't have to be. It can be a .net, .org. But originally and ordinarily I would tell everybody to try a .com first. .com is basically business name or dot com is what everybody goes to how many people out there know even know people might not even know there's orgs people might not know there's a dot us ca is canada dot info a lot of people don't even know those when you tell people my website is betty's photo gallery what are they going to type in dot com and then we check it to see if it's available so right now it's going out to one and one is doing a check to see if that name is actually available and there you go. Believe it or not, first shot, it is. Betty'sPhotoGallery.com. It's available. So if I hit continue, I would go through the process and I would actually purchase that name. So let's say if your name is Jane Smith and it's Jane Smith Photography or Billy, uh, Billy Joe Photography or whoever, search the name out and see if you can purchase it. Once you do that, you buy it. Okay, now once you buy that name and you have that, then you go to your Weebly site. You go to your Weebly site. Actually, I think I'm logged in here. So Weebly, if you're not signed up now, again, both of these, you can use, go to my website before you do both of these. Please do that at jackstechcorner.com, and you'll find the links on the left to get to these. And when you use those, that actually helps to show out. So you're, re you're referred from here, from the show. So, so you come to here. Then you go ahead and create your, your website. Basically, you create a Weebly site. Full name, email, and password. Sign up, it's free. You go through a little sign up, and you can sign up for the free account. Doesn't cost you a thing. You, you're allowed two websites, and that's pretty good. I mean, two websites, and there's some other little bit limitations in there. So, it 
once you have that limitation over with and, and you get all that done, you can always sign for a pro account. Again, all you got to do is do an upgrade and go to the pro account, which I did because it gives me a couple added features. But what we're talking about right now this morning is domain names. So let's go here. This is the Weebly editor. It's very easy to use and it's called a WYSIWYG. Now, if you don't know what that is, all that means is what you see is what you get. WYSIWYG. So if I drop a button on my page, I get a button. If I drop a contact form on my page, I get a contact form. It's very easy to do. Just like all the advertisement I put over here. All I did was put a custom HTML uh, holder over here and then I just started typing everything in. It was very easy to do and it was a piece of cake. But what we're talking about today is we don't want this site to say jackstechcorner.weebly.com. That's just not what we want to be. We want to be jackstechcorner.com. Well, how did I do that? Well, we go under settings at the top. Uh-oh. That's not good. Try to retry that. Maybe the show's taking their site down. That's not good. Let me log back in here. We'll try to get back in here and get going again. All right, we'll go to edit site. Okay, now hopefully this is going to work. Settings. All right. So now that we're in the settings up here at the address at the top, yours is going to say probably, um, what did we use there? Betty's Photo Gallery dot Weebly dot com because we signed up for that account with Betty's Galleries and that's what the address would be. So if you click on this change site address, when you do that, type in your new domain name. Mine happens to be jackstechcorner.com. Now, all right, and I'll check the chat room in just a minute. Let me get through the segment and then I'll answer your questions. So, jackstechcorner.com. Once you do that, click on save. And close this. And then at the top on here on Weebly, if you can see that right at the top, there's a yellow button. Click on publish and that'll publish those changes up. Now, once you have that done, now we're going to go ahead and we're gonna submit that to Google. Now, I would give, once you set this stuff up, give it about 24 hours because it has to do what we call propagating the internet. It has to go out and propagate across the internet to be able to get out there to uh, update all the servers and stuff so everybody knows that you have this website. Then, once you know you can find it, in other words, in the next morning or so, type your name in, uh, bettysphotogallery.com, and see if it comes up. If that website comes up that you created, now you're ready to go ahead and publicize it. We'll go right here to website owner. So, in this website, I'll show you in a minute where these links are, so don't even worry about trying to see this up here, because I know it's tough. It's google.com slash submit your content slash website owner whatever add your URL here you'll sign in so you have to have a, you know you probably have a Google account anyway I'm sure if you have YouTube videos or a Gmail account you have a Google Google account so just log in and then go ahead and you're gonna publish your website all it's gonna ask you is for your domain name you click on it and it'll go out and start searching around the internet for the information for your domain name and uh, once it finds all your information, it'll make it searchable for people. Now there's drawbacks. Here's some drawbacks about this. One, as soon as you get it, put it in there, and I know you're gonna do like I did the first time. I did a Google search like, why is it not coming up? Another Google search, why is it not coming up? It's based on ratings. The more people that go out there and hit your link and hit your link and hit your link, the more you're gonna move up in ratings and get higher page ratings. So that would put you more to the top. So you're going to be in there somewhere. Uh, the way I do it is I just search for my actual name, Jack's Tech Corner, 
and usually throws me right into my page uh, so just to make sure it is searchable now with that said that will get you all going let's go back to my page because I'm going to show you that I made this very easy today for you guys so here's my page under the home button here at the top there's a thing that says show notes click on that and right here I have those steps for you right here under photography weekly number 58 I got the web hosting here if you click on there you can buy your domain name and then you will go ahead and you'll go to your Weebly site or just go to Weebly itself and set up your Weebly site and then after 24 hours click on this link and go into Google and go ahead and add your web pages or add your domain name so it can be searchable so there you go it's under photography weekly number 58 under our show notes which I know I haven't been keeping up on but I'm trying to do my very best there okay with that said I'm going to just see if there is any uh, questions here in the chat room and at the same time we are going to go ahead and we are going to open up our Skype and we'll put the number up here and we'll see if we get any Skype callers this morning again we'll talk about that there Ra Ra Ramon we'll talk about that in a minute Let's see here where my Skype went I'll just say later on that. So we do have Skype open there this morning. Jody is not seeing the notes. That's interesting. Maybe do a refresh on your page. Yes, it's under home. So click on home. And then under home, you're going to actually go ahead and... Uh, click on show notes and you'll find those notes under there and that will kind of guide you through that. So if anybody else has any questions, throw them up there in the uh, chat room. We're getting ready here to do uh, the segment that I always enjoy. And that segment is basically just... Uh, that segment is our tribute. And this week it's a tribute to puzzles and magazine covers which I was very excited uh, how many people turned those in this week. It's been really nice. And uh, Serena there is talking about her uh, website was not coming up, only your business. Facebook. Facebook will because Facebook, it's always facebook.com slash then our page, whatever our pages are set to. So, um, And Andy said there's not a lot about Google. That link, Andy, basically all that link is telling you there is um, it's pointing you to Google just to go there. You'll, you click on that link. You'll go there and uh, then just click on Submit My Site and uh, put your site in there, submit it. So, again, I just wanted to give that out this morning. Um, you know, it might not be as photo related, but for you guys out there starting your photography businesses, I thought it was much needed uh, to, to maybe teach you a little bit about that and show you how that is set up and how we do that so hopefully you're good to go there and Andy remember when you put these on everybody have to remember when you put these pictures on Facebook don't just post them on the wall you have to go into the album so click on photos at the top and look for the this week assignment look for that album and put it in there if it's not in there I don't download it so please make sure they get in there so and yeah flyer here you're right this this group has a lot of talent in here there's a lot of great folks in here and it, it tell you what every week it amazes me uh, because everybody gets even better and then I start learning from everybody so it's, it's a good idea to start this because I pick up from everybody I call it paying it paying it forward you learn and you keep teaching that's the way to do things so with that said, this week's assignment is, what do you think it is? Hmm. That's right, photo booth strip. So we want to see your photo booth strip. And I gave you the tutorial. Hopefully you took some notes. Or maybe you'll catch us on fate on uh, YouTube later. Um, probably sometime tomorrow. And you can actually uh, take this and actually create a photo booth strip is what we want to see. 
and look under photos. Remember on Facebook, under photos, look for an album in there. And I'll call the album, uh, it'll be called Photo Booth. And it'll have week, and this is week 58. So that's the assignment, week is 58. Go in there and just upload your picture there. It's very easy to do that. And if not, look for my name on, on the Facebook group and go back through my posts. I should put a video up on how to upload it. It's about a two-minute video, and I'll show you how to upload it to the album itself. So once again, folks, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here again with me uh, this Sunday morning. Hopefully you learned something today, and hopefully uh, I paid my uh, part of it forward to you guys uh, to show you something new and exciting, and hopefully you picked up something out of it. So get those photo boost trips in here. And until next week, as I'll be doing today, get those shutters clicking, keep the editors editing, and I'll see you back here next week with Photography Weekly on Jack's Tech Corner. Bye for now, gang.